all areas of human knowledge have their own language. And once you learn that language, you begin to understand what that area really has to offer. This applies to finance, to health, to car mechanics, and to web development as well, and IT in general. So I'm gonna go through some basic concepts uh, that will help you navigate throughout this course and through having to deal with IT professionals or if you wanna get started with your own IT projects and build your, your website or your app. Um, this, I think, will be a good starting point. Let's begin by the very basics. Um, what is the internet? Well, for some people that's a place where they share photos, they share their the LOL cats, documents. Um, but if we go if we if we go a bit more strict to what the definition is, the internet is actually a bunch of computers spread all around the world that talk to each other using a certain protocol, a certain language that's called uh, TCP IP. It's not a language, but it's say that's that's what they use to communicate to each other and from the internet um, the World Wide Web came out which is a network of hypertext documents that are linked to each other what we know as web web pages websites um, in 1990 the first web browser came out it was called www and it's what you see on the screen so um, you need a, what's called a web browser to open websites and websites are uh, made in a language called HTML. So the web today has gone quite far from that um, early beginnings and we have all sorts of um, things now like social networks and multimedia messaging documents and everything you can think of. Um, but the basics uh, remain kind of the same in in terms of this uh, model. So there's there's a client, which is your computer, your web browser, that makes a request to the cloud, to the server, and it receives from the server a response. When you go to Facebook, you're making a request to the Facebook server, you're asking for the Facebook page, and the server sends you back um, a response which contains the the files like the, the 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 actual HTML file, the CSS files, and the images of that Facebook page, and then you enter your login. That gets sent again to the server and another request. And if your login is correct, you get a response back, and that's the page that shows your your friends and all of the other stuff. If your password is wrong, then you get a response that says your password is wrong. So this basic interaction is a core element of web development. And I want you to keep this in mind. The client is your web browser. We have many web browsers out there. And something important to keep in mind as well is that we live in a post-PC world, in a post-computer world, where computers are not the only device that you can use to access the internet. There's phones, tablets, TVs, refrigerators, and more and more devices are now capable of connecting to the internet. Um, the client usually is what you, the user sees, so the presentation, so you get you get the Facebook page, right? You see the photos of your friends, their status, but that's not the actual data, it's just what's been sent to you, but they have the, re like the, the data saved in a database in the server. So, and the client has also, it also receives the user input and sends that to the server. The languages used on the client side, the technologies used, are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML and CSS have to do with um, mostly with appearance. So HTML is just the structure and the content. And then that content becomes pretty with CSS. CSS takes care of uh, font families, font types, layouts, colors, um, sizes of the fonts, of the elements, alignments, and a whole bunch of other stuff. JavaScript takes care of um, interactivity. It adds logic to your web page, so you and, and it's more and more common that there's more and more logic on the client side, and JavaScript is used for that. On the server, on the other hand, uh, a server is basically a computer in a data center. That's what it is. A computer which could be uh, like a, a grid of many computers um, connected to each other, but it's 
uh, the simplest way to see it, it's a computer located somewhere in the world, most likely in a data center. Uh, when we talk about the cloud, we're using, we're usually talking about, I mean, we're always talking about some servers, some computers located somewhere in the world that are keeping my files and my photos and uh, my information. Servers have databases where they keep information and they also take care of the business logic, um, data validation. So if I send my um, user and password to the server, it gets checked against the database. Is this user, does this user exist? Is uh, this user's password the one that they sent? Uh, is that correct? That checking is done in the, on the server side. There are many different languages used on the server side. Um, there's PHP, Java, Python, Ruby, JavaScript that I mentioned earlier is also used as a server side language. And there's a bunch more, more um, server alternatives. Some things that are done in the server. So when you talk to your developer or when you're planning your project, um, you always need to think which things are going to be done in the client and in the server. So everything that has to do with you creating data, storing data, saving data, updating, deleting data, that's all really happening on the server. You, as a client, in, the, in your web browser, you get the view that shows you a table of elements and a delete button in each one of them, but the actual data is stored in the cloud, in the server. So everything that has to do with logging and logout as well is done against uh, server-side checks and saving saving files, saving photos, saving documents, that's all sent to the server and that's where it's stored. And when I say server, it could be like many different services, servers for one uh, web application. So sometimes it could have the database in one server and then the files in a different server and then connect to each other, but that's behind the scenes for you. I don't want you to leave this course without knowing about HTML, without knowing anything about HTML5. HTML5 is the latest um, specifications of HTML, and it gives, um, it takes HTML to a whole new level where there's much more interactivity, much more behavior, integration with some of your devices, uh, native features like camera. And with, if you learn HTML5 uh, all the way, you can make not only websites, but also all sorts of apps, mobile apps, TV apps, or any device, apps for any device that supports HTML5, and also games. You can make mobile games or desktop games. And you can also make um, like Windows uh, programs or Mac programs or uh, desktop computer applications. You can make those too. And well, we're not covering this in this course. It's sort of a building. That, I, that I've made. Um, at, at, at the bottom you have HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Those are the core sort of uh, web technologies for, for the client. Uh, on top of that you build on the newer HTML5 specs on CSS3 which is a newer CSS that has uh, animations and a bunch of other stuff. JavaScript APIs that allow you to connect to the GPS of your device, to camera, and then there are more libraries that you can learn that will help you, like jQuery that helps you manipulate what's going on on the page. That's a really simple way of putting it. Um, jQuery Mobile it allows you to create like the the mobile the mobile version of the of the page so that it will render in all sorts of mobile phones, even old ones. Um, and then you need some sort of cloud or some sort of server side. You can build your own server side, or you can use an like, existing backend called backend as a service. Um, and on top, and when you when you when you've reached that point, you can actually build apps that are for many platforms: iOS, Android, and Windows uh, Mobile, BlackBerry. Um, and we have another course by Zemba, which goes through this entire building all the way to the top, from the beginning all the way to the top. Uh, which I recommend you check out as well, especially when you finish this course and you get a good grasp of uh, HTML and CSS. Uh, that's called um, iOS and Android HTML5 Apps for Beginners. And now we're all good to get started with uh, the basics of HTML.